Hey friends, welcome to today's video. I hope the year is treating you super good so far. It is treating me well. We have our first snowstorm of the season just outside the windows here in central Virginia. And the snowflakes are big and magical. And I just, I love that first snowfall when the earth is quiet, everyone's indoors, leaving you alone. <laughs> And the world is blanketed in that first layer of white snow. And it's sort of like that marshmallow world outside. So I bring you joy from central Virginia as I look out the window and marvel in the wonder of this beautiful snowstorm. Today's video is going to be focused on 10 houses that I think are super popular here on YouTube, perhaps on Instagram as well. I'm not on TikTok. Well, I am. I do have an account there, but it's not really like an active account. So I don't really know what's happening over on the TikTok fragrance world. And I'm not on Instagram that much occasionally, but I am on YouTube a lot. So these are 10 niche houses that I hear talked about frequently uh, across the channels that I watch. And the idea is to pick one, just one from each of these houses that if you are newer to the fragrance world or unfamiliar with the house, I personally, based on my own taste and experience with the houses, think you should give a try first, meaning get a sample, get a larger decan, heck, buy a travel spray and see what you think about it if it suits your fancy. So it has to be an easy entry into the house, meaning a fragrance that I think would have mass appeal. A lot of people seem to like it. It's pretty feminine. I know those of you that are newer to fragrances maybe aren't into unisex or masculine leaning fragrances. You tend to really more appreciate the more feminine fragrances and that is totally fine. So these are like safe gateway entries into these niche houses. It's debatable whether these are the 10 most popular. So this is a little bit of an art and not a science and using my own judgment. And again, the fragrances that I've chosen are based on my own personal preferences and taste. So keep that in mind. I don't have any in front of me that I consider to be adventurous or bizarre from these houses. There's gonna be a designer version that comes up after this. That's an arbitrary distinction between the niche and designer videos. I just did that so that it's easier to organize them and perhaps because you have a preference for one or the other. I do not, I love fragrances across all the categories. Give me the most amazing niche, the most amazing designer, give me great celebrity, great indie. I don't care if it's a fragrance that smells good, I wanna check it out and see if it belongs on my shelf. So with that, niche is only defined only defined as a house that only makes fragrances. That's it. That's all that the word niche means. There are a lot of people that want to convince you that niche means it's higher quality. There are better ingredients. There's a more artistic factor behind them. I don't buy into any of all of that. Okay. So if you do, that's on you. I don't live in that camp of things. That said, I have an appreciation for a lot of different fragrances. Okay. Enough intro. Let's get to it. And actually it's debatable <laughs> whether this first house really qualifies as niche or not, because I think technically it's sitting under the umbrella of Huda Beauty, which is the parent company. I don't know. I'm sure one of you knows. And if you've looked it up, drop it down in the comments for us. But I'm talking about the ever popular house of Kayali, arguably one of the most beloved houses here on YouTube. It is like the darling of the fragrance community. And so much so that when we know that Kayali is about to drop a fragrance, people go bananas and get in line, <laughs> wait up hours until it drops on Sephora or on the website to grab their fragrance. So maybe I'm cheating a little bit with this. If it is technically under Huda Beauty, which is a makeup brand, then this isn't niche, but we're just going to call it niche for today. Uh, and the fragrance, as you can see, that I would advise people to check out first and foremost from the line is Utopia Vanilla Cocoa. 21. All of the Kayali fragrances have these long names that are hard for me to remember, and they all have a number following the name, which is supposed to denote the number of times that it took for the formula to get to where it was approved for production and release, the number of iterations that the fragrance went through. Now, those of you that are Kayali lovers out there, you might be going, whoa, that's the one you chose, Veronica. But remember, this is about me and my taste and what I would tell someone to try first that I think is a safe entry into the house. Perhaps some of you may argue that it's Vanilla 28 or maybe one of the other ones. I think that this is a mass appealing fragrance that has a lot of summer appeal, however, is easily worn throughout the seasons. And so what does it smell like? Beautiful, creamy coconut and these delightful soft white florals sitting on a bed of sweet vanilla. For me, this is an easy to love fragrance. 
It reminds me of living your best life in the summer without being sunscreeny. I think there's an elegance to this fragrance. It's gotten stronger as it has sat on my shelf. And it's one that I don't hesitate to reach for in the summer. I'm never like not in the mood for this fragrance. Some of the other Kaoli fragrances can be moody in the sense that there has to be maybe certain weather or a certain type of occasion for which you would want to pull them. I think this is one that is just appealing across all types of settings. And I do think that a lot of people who enjoy a creamy coconut and white florals would probably find this pleasant and a great place to start from the house moderate longevity, moderate projection. And when I say moderate, I'm talking about anywhere between the four to eight hour range in terms of lasting. So let's split the difference and say about six hours on this. Really great first entry into the Kaali kingdom, if you will. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Very creamy, very rich, decadent smelling fragrance. This is a winner for me. By the way, I didn't mention, but let me mention now that I have lined these up in order of ease into the house in general. So for me, Kayali is one of the easiest houses to begin to explore because there are a lot of fragrances in the lineup that people really like, all the way down to the house that is the hardest to get to know because if you are a beginner or not familiar with different scent profiles, or you think you only like one type of profile, it's gonna be the most difficult one to explore. So stay tuned for the progression of this. Next, we move to the House of Parfums de Marly. There are many, many, many channels that sing the praises of the female lineup from this house. I also happen to like a number of the fragrances that are on the male side from this house. And I know you think I'm going to talk about Ojan, but I'm not, although I love that. And so I didn't say this at the beginning. The ones that I actually selected aren't necessarily my favorites from the house. They are the ones that I would advise to someone who was newer or beginning to explore. Just to reiterate. So for me, that fragrance from this house is Delina Exclusive. There are a number of fragrances I thought about for this category. Delina La Rose comes to mind, maybe Oriana, but I think this is the one that has the most feminine mass appeal of all of the lineup in the house. And it's hard not to like, if you're a pink lover, it's hard not to like these really, really pretty soft, like nudey pink bottles. And the fragrance itself, the reason that I chose this over the regular Delina, because this has rose and lychee and woody notes and all of that, the thing that sets this apart to, to me is that it has more vanilla than the original, which I think gives this a smoother, rounder, deeper feeling, a little bit of amber in the fragrance as well. So I find this to be a really elegant, mature, rose, fruity, vanillic, woody fragrance that's super appropriate for lots of different occasions. I don't know that musk is listed as a note, but there's definitely like this hint of very soft powdery musk for me. It's a long lasting fragrance and really appealing. So this is one that I think gets a lot of compliments from folks and is a great special occasion for people too. So I would go with this one as the entry point into the house. Next we go to bond number nine, which is a house that I have a lot of appreciation for because the bottles are all named after either streets or neighborhoods in New York City where I grew up. And so there's a lot of memory that comes up for me when I smell one of these fragrances and think about why it was named what it was named. There are a lot of really easy reach entry point fragrances into this house. And I probably could have picked something that was more in the fresh floral direction. But I have to say, I think this fragrance has a lot of appeal, especially if you have an appreciation for fragrances that lean in the gourmand direction, meaning that there's something in the fragrance that smells yummy and edible to you. And I do happen to like this particular bottle. This is Tribeca, Tribeca, named after the neighborhood of Tribeca in downtown Manhattan. The fragrance has a little bit of floral from Jasmine Sambach in it. And it's characterized by a combination of cacao and hazelnut and some caramel and some musk. A little bit of woodiness in the fragrance too. And it has a creaminess in the sense that this fragrance does, the Kaali one does, except it goes more in the gourmand direction, uh, smelling like a Nutella or a hazelnut, a hazelnut spread and Nutella combined together, along with a little bit of woodiness in the base to make this a year round fragrance and one that's especially suitable as it starts to cool down. I would absolutely wear this in the summer, but a lot of people tend to think of this as a fall fragrance or a spring fragrance. Maybe doesn't have the depth that people would want in their winter fragrances, although I think it performs really nicely in what I call sweater weather and all of the varieties of sweater weather. So you've got your beautiful soft cashmere 
sweater on, your turtleneck, and you want to smell feminine and yummy at the same time, try Tribeca. See if you can get a decant of this and see how it performs on you. I will say that this is one that some people say doesn't mesh well with their chemistry. That's probably the case for all these fragrances, to be honest, but I think I see it more with this one than perhaps some of the others that I'm going to mention. So definitely give it a try first because it can be a pricey fragrance. These other ones, a lot of the other ones I'm going to mention, I would say check on Joma Shop. And I have a link in the description box that is a partner link. I'm a partner to Joma Shop and you get some of the best prices there. So check that out, go in through the landing page that I have available through there and shop through there. And if you prefer not to shop on a discount site and you pr would prefer a full retail site, a lot of these are also available on So Avant Garde. And if you want some percentage off, Veronica 20 is the code to use at So Avant Garde for 20% off of your entire order. So this shows up on Joma Shop Tribeca for in the $200 range, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, depending on what's in supply and what the demand looks like. You can also, friends, if you don't want to shop through any of those links, which is totally fine, I would say Google any of these fragrances and then go to the shopping tab after you type in like Tribeca bond number nine and see what sites are offering the fragrance lower. My only caution to those of you that are newer to purchasing fragrances, if you want to go full bottle is be careful about shopping on Mercari and be careful about shopping on eBay. There are some fragrance brands that are more commonly counterfeited, including some of the ones that I'm going to talk about in this video and in the designer video. Parfums de Marley tends to be one of the fragrance companies or lines rather that are heavily counterfeited and it looks exactly the same to you as the consumer. You don't even know the difference un unless you understand sort of the fine details of the fragrance. So be careful shopping on secondhand sites unless you know and trust the seller like intimately. <laughs> okay. How did we get on that topic? Otherwise, I would say check out places like Scent Split, Decant X, Lucky Scent, and places like that if you want to try a sample or a decant of these. You can try Twisted Lily for samples as well. The samples on Lucky Scent, Lucky Scent has everything by way of samples, a lot. And the more popular ones are sometimes like back ordered or they're sold out and they come in these little one mil dabbers, one milliliter dabbers that can be really annoying in terms of trying to get a really good sense of what the fragrance smells like. And so in that sense, I would say try Twisted Lily. They actually have two milliliter sprayers that give you a much better sense and can give you a full wear of a fragrance. Woo, let's keep going. <laughs> Next, I'm going to Zerjoff, which is a really popular niche house, both on YouTube and on Instagram. And there are a lot that I could have chosen from this house. But again, I'm going for something that's feminine and gentle and an easy entry into the house. And for that, I chose the beautiful Dama Bianca, which almost slipped out of my hand and created a catastrophe here. <laughs> the bottle gives you some sense of what this smells like, this sort of frosted, really soft, yellow nude effect on the bottle and look at the the photo there of this delicate uh, deity or princess or mythical figure or whatever i don't really know what it is dama bianca i believe translates into lady in white or something like that this fragrance is described as ethereal and fluffy and light it's characterized by a soft delicate, elegant vanilla. The fragrance comes across a little bit powdery, not in the talc sense. Like if you think about a powder puff and the way that it kind of chokes you out, it's a much sort of softer, delicate, elegant powderiness, along with some really cool florals. The vanilla helps to give it sweetness and roundness, but the cool florals are like violet and lilac and iris, which are typically associated with elegance and fragrance and coming across, across a cloth, coming across coming across as classy <laughs> and sophisticated. This is my scent of the day and great for a day when it's snowing here, when you want to smell just pretty and feminine and cool as a cucumber in the winter here. It's a fairly light fragrance, but easy to love, I think, even for me who sometimes shies away from some of those cooler, colder floral types of profiles. I would say also that this fragrance has a brightness to it from citrus that keeps it from being overly serious and kind of balances everything out. So this is a really sophisticated fragrance. A lot of people think of this as a wedding fragrance or the type of scent that you wear when you want to be feminine and very soft, very soft. So Dama Bianca is my choice from Zerjoff. Next, we go to Nishan or Nishane, depending on how you want to say that or how you think it's pronounced. And I'm going to go with the ever popular, beloved 100 Silent Ways. 
Now, again, as with any of these fragrances, not everyone loves them. So that's why I would advise checking these out and testing them out. I love that the house puts the prominent notes right there on the plate at the front, the ones that they want you to notice. And here we have Mandarin, Tuberose, Peach, White Jasmine, Gardenia, Oris, Vanilla, Sandalwood, and Vetiver. For me, the dominant notes here are a beautiful base of vanilla and very soft sandalwood. And lingering above that is this combination of tuberose and gardenia, which combine into a very soft white floral effect. Do I sense peach in the fragrance? I would say that I sense a very light, soft fruitiness that lends like a sweetness to the composition without feeling like you're smelling peach, at least not for me. This is very much a beautiful, elegant fragrance. That vanilla is nice and sweet and gives it this like really delightful creaminess for me. It's very long lasting, a fragrance that kind of sneaks up on you. I remember when I first sprayed this and thought, I don't understand what everybody's excited about. It kind of disappeared on me or felt like it disappeared except that other people could smell it on me. Now I understand that this is the kind of fragrance that Although you may not smell it, others can smell it on you. It lasts a very long time and projects. I would say, by the way, that Dama Bianca, forgot to mention, is not the longest lasting fragrance. You'll probably get somewhere in the neighborhood of a four-ish hour experience from that. And I didn't mention, but should have that Tribeca is fairly long lasting. This one lasts a very long time and gives you a beautiful scent bubble. I think it is the most feminine fragrance from this lineup. Uh, the whole house lineup. There are some other nice ones in there that are feminine leaning, a little bit fruitier and all of that, but this would be my top pick for likability and mass appeal. Beautiful. Then we go to the house of BDK. This one is a little bit harder because there are a number of really beloved fragrances from this house that are prominent on YouTube and they come and go in waves. The one that really captured my heart as being one of the most feminine and easy to love Although I have to say there are a number of people that are kind of repulsed by this fragrance. It's the type of thing, if you love it, you love it. And if you don't, you don't. And this is Passessoir. This has the black cap. All of the bottles look like this, except sometimes the caps and the labels will be a little bit different. And the extract versions of some of the fragrances come in darker colors. So this fragrance is very much a fruit forward, floral, woody fragrance. Gosh, that's a little bit of a tongue twister. Fruit forward, floral woody fragrance yeah <laughs> it is year round a lot of people tend to associate this with summer but it has enough heft depth and presence to really be a wintertime fragrance and definitely a, an early spring and late fall deal the primary fruit note in here is quince which is this really lively juicy uh scent there's also citrus in the fragrance there's a muskiness. I think sometimes people can't get down with like the musky woody combo that undergirds the fragrance. You know, it's almost like sitting on top of that, but you've got that beautiful, juicy, fruity scent alongside some nice florals and a little bit of citrus in here. I think this is bright and lovely yet substantive. Okay. It will stick to your skin. When I first tried this, I felt like it didn't last forever. I felt like it was a four ish hour fragrance. And I realized the more that I tried it, that it actually is another one of these fragrances that goes on longer than you can actually smell it for. And people will detect this on you. I think that this is crowd pleasing, mass appealing, and I've gotten compliments on this when I've worn it, which is saying a lot because I don't leave my house often. So when I do, if I get a compliment on what I'm wearing, <laughs> that really stands out to me when I'm out, you know, in retail spaces or at work events and that kind of a thing. So Passe Soir would be my top pick from BDK as an easy love for folks. Then from the house of Fragrance Dubois, which tends to be maybe a little bit, well, they're all pricey. So who am I kidding? All these fragrances with the exception of Kayali, these are the most reasonably priced ones. The rest of them, they will cost you a lot unless you get them on a discount site or use one of those discount codes that I mentioned. But I fell in love with this fragrance on first sniff. I had a dupe of it and the dupe was okay. It was, you know, adequate, but there was something really special about having the actual fragrance in hand. And this is Oud Jean Intense. That would be my main pick from this house as having universal, mass appeal, highly feminine, great for lots of different kinds of folks. Again, not everyone loves this. And this is one of the pricier ones from the house. So definitely try first. This is like summer in a bottle. And I'm talking about like a summer tropical garden. Friends, if you've ever smelled tiara flower, like in the wild, <laughs> on a tropical island, if you put your nose up to a tiara bloom, 
it is luscious, white floral, creamy deliciousness. There's something just so like filling the air, satisfying your olfactory senses from the creaminess of it that I really love. So the tiara flower is prominent here as is ylang ylang. And sometimes that note can come across, it's a yellow floral. It can come across a little bit banana-esque and maybe have even a little bit of, depending on how it's how it's done in the fragrance. It can feel really exotic, the ylang ylang flower. There's some touch of fruitiness. I believe pineapple is a note. So there's some zestiness in the fragrance alongside the white and, and yellow floral combinations. Jasmine and other white florals that I'm not recalling off the top of my head. A little bit of muskiness, a little bit of vanilla and woodiness as a base to this fragrance. This is incredibly elegant, super like luxe resort smelling type of deal. Like if you've ever walked a tropical island at night and you've been in lush gardens, the way that the air smells creamy and floral and amazing and lush, just super lush is what I get from this fragrance. Very long lasting, super high quality, really enjoy this. This is a spectacular summer fragrance and it's gotten even deeper and more interesting as it has sat in my collection and oxidized some. So it doesn't take a lot of sprays of this friends and it's beautiful if you like a summer floral fragrance. Going next to Initio, as you can see, if I've done this right, I've uh, sort of progressed up the ladder of complexity of these houses. Now, arguably, there are some houses in the Zerjoff category that belong in the upper end of complex, but there's enough in the house that are easy to love like this that I kept it down sort of lower in complexity in terms of exploration into the house. Inicio, <laughs> woo! These fragrances are known to be pretty powerful, pretty polarizing, and super long lasting for the most part. It differs from fragrance to fragrance and person to person. A lot of the ones that I have, they can be overpowering. They all, for the most part, come in bottles that look like this uh, in either darker colors and then there's a white line that has some more like spa-like smells in it. This one that I have chosen, I think, is one of the most mass appealing among the female YouTube reviewers. There's a lot of fragrances that some of us really love and some of us are super repulsed by. We're looking at you, Absolute Aphrodisiac. We're looking at you, Addictive Vibration. We're looking at you, Side Effect. We're looking at you, Bless Baraka so on and so forth. This one is Psychedelic Love, and I think it is widely enjoyed by a lot of the female Fragcom reviewers, and I've seen some gentlemen talk about this fragrance as well, and they like it. For me, what makes this appealing is that it is it has this almondiness to it, almond floral fragrance sitting on luscious sandalwood. It is soft and sensual and captivating. It's one of these sort of slowly calling to you, come hither, doesn't scream loud. I wanted to choose Atomic Rose from this house because for me, that is one of my favorites that I think is great for ladies that are a little bit more adventurous, but it has enough closeness, closeness to Delina exclusive that I didn't want to have two in the lineup that were similar enough or that similar. And I think that some people find Atomic Rose to be a little bit overpowering for them. I feel like this is a softer, easier to enjoy fragrance. If you like the powdery sweetness and nuttiness of almond, it shows up as heliotrope in the fragrance, which is a floral that can come across a little bit like Play-Doh almondy. There's a sweet warmth from myrrh in the fragrance. Myrrh can be this sort of balsamic, resinous type of scent. Sandalwood, very pretty, soft sandalwood here. Alang Alang and Hedione. And Hedione, if I'm not mistaken, is part of the jasmine family or extracted from jasmine or something. So it's got that sort of white and yellow floral combination. I would say the florals in here are softer and they are like a supporting actor for that almondiness, the warmth from the myrrh and the sandalwood. Really delightful fragrance. A sleeper. This is the kind of fragrance you would put on and not think much of it until you wear it during the day and understand the sort of allure that it has on others and the appeal that it has to others. So very much a pretty girl fragrance, if you will, or pretty guy fragrance. You know, anyone can wear this and it has a softness and a sensuality to it that I think is mass appealing. Then one of my favorite, favorite houses, I have a lot of fragrances from this one, probably approaching 20 fragrances at this point. <laughs> it's Tiziana Terenzi. And this is a house that people either really get into or they can't get with a lot of the sort of common notes across the house. Like a lot of the fragrances tend to be heavily musky or woody or something else that people are just, it's not their thing. 
it is my thing. <laughs> I really love Tiziana Terenzi. I've been rarely disappointed with any of them. And even the ones that I was disappointed by, I could find something in them that I really liked, but just didn't feel like it was the fragrance for me to wear long term. This fragrance here is a beautiful, delightful surprise. Some people even call it a masterpiece of a fragrance. That's a pretty strong thing to say about a fragrance. I've got a masterpiece video coming up this season. Stay tuned for that. This is Delox. Deluxe. You have smelled Roses Vini from Mancera or Intense Cafe from Antal. They're in the same family. I think this is the best of the three. I've smelled them all and this is by far superior to me in terms of a smoother, more elegant blend of a fragrance. Definitely a really soft, dewy, fresh rose, vanilla. Some people pick up coffee in the fragrance. I can't say that I really pick up a lot of coffee, maybe some hints of that a muskiness and there's softness from honey the honey here doesn't feel to me like a traditional honey smell like if you're sticking your nose in a jar of honey and you get that really soft thick syrupiness from honey no but there is some sweetness here mainly for me a uh, soft rose and vanilla accompanied by musk i do look at this i do hate the bottles on these particular ones the black ones i call them the hockey puck bottles <laughs> bottles they don't really sit on as well as they should and that's a dang shame for what you're paying for these fragrances although this is one that shows up on discount sites frequently so again you can go to like fragrance net or whatever this should be out on so avant-garde and you should be able to find it on joma shop as well check the link below this is a really long lasting very very elegant fragrance this is what you call a refined scent for the lady that knows herself isn't afraid to show up in a space. You don't need a lot of this fragrance. You can do a few sprays and it will take you all day. Super long lasting, very strong fragrance, Deluxe. And then we go to the very polarizing house of Amouage, which has taken the front and center space in my fragrance life this past year, 2023, going into 2024. I've kind of fallen head over heels for a lot of them as I continue to explore the house more. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I have sampled probably thousands of fragrances at this point and become accustomed to different scent profiles. And so what used to shock me about this house actually is appealing to me now. And that can tend to happen the more fragrances you try. People talk about like your palette, your olfactory palette expanding. You know, that sounds a little pretentious to me, but I guess that's true. And so we'll just go with that, friends. But <laughs> The fragrance that I think is probably the one I would want you to try first from this house Love Tuberose might be the one that a lot of people would think is the easiest entry into the house. And, and I think that's a good contender, but I'm going to go out on a limb just a little bit here because we're talking about Amouage. And so you want something characteristic of the house. I think Love Tuberose is an outlier in terms of the scent profile of the house. It's one of those mass appealing ones that maybe doesn't represent the house well. Honor, Honor Woman is what it's called is for me one of the most sophisticated refined white floral fragrances out on the market another one that could be considered a wedding scent or a special occasion floral powerhouse floral this does last for me decently and projects well while you're wearing it it isn't the longest lasting so it's not going to go through the entire day but it will definitely friends this will hold you down through an event and it is the quintessential lovely white floral DNA with a little bit of kick and twist that only Amouage can do so well. This has the trifecta of tuberose and gardenia and jasmine as the primary white notes in the fragrance. There's a lot more going on, including a touch of greenness, like just a hint to give it some complexity, amber, and a little bit of woodiness in the base of the fragrance to hold this down and give it some depth. It is beautiful, very lovely, very refined, like I said. This is one that a lot of women who have this and love this consider to be one of their very best white floral fragrances. And friends, when I think about the most feminine fragrances through the decades, so here lately we are on a gourmand kick and a vanilla kick on YouTube, totally fine but it's very indicative of this time period, this era. When we think about through the decades, like perfume history, for me, it's white florals that stand out the most as being the quintessential ladies fragrances. And so I'm gonna go with Honor as my choice. So friends, what did you think of this lineup? How did I do here? And do you think there are other fragrances from any of these houses that should be top tier for people who are exploring the house first? Drop that in the comments. I know that you all read each other's comments and sometimes reply to each other's comments, which is super cool and weigh in with your own thoughts, experiences, and opinions. Appreciate you hanging out with me. There is going to be a designer version of this coming up after this. 
And I also want to put on your radar, friends, that we're doing a special sale with So Avant-Garde here coming up in February. So ladies and gentlemen, get your coins and your wallets together because we're going to be spending some money on fragrances in the next month and smelling great. So if you've got your eye on some of these and would prefer to wait for a deeper discount, it is on the way, friends. It is on the way. I got you. I got your back. See you in the next video. Take care.